Okay, so tonight, ano, uh, sa last uh, Saturday natin, no, uh, ng 2022, uh, balikan natin yung basic. No, let's go back to the basic, and this is about uh, Paul um, um, spreading or presenting the gospel, no. Uh, kung paano ipinahayag ni Pablo yung Ebanghelyo, uh, particularly doon sa Athens. Right? <clears throat> so, of course, alam natin ang Athens, uh, is ito sa ngayon, eh, siyempre ngayon, tourist uh, destination siya. But back then, of course, ang Athens is uh, uh, a, a, a major town or major uh, city sa, sa Greece na kung saan they worship, of course, yung kanilang maraming Diyos, no? Uh, they have uh, different gods. There's uh, something called the twelve, uh, whatever it is, um, ibat ibang dios. Sina Zeus, uh, sina Poseidon, and many other gods uh, that they worship back in Greece. No, so alam natin na yung Athens ay uh, uh, maramis ang mga dios diosan kumbaga. No, maraming uh, idols that were um, uh, very very prevalent. Masadong kalat laganap yan. Laganap yung tamang word doon. No? Laganap yung uh, idols sa Athens. And ito yung idols ng kanilang mga gods. No? Siyempre sa ngayon, alam natin yung Athens, pretty much ang main attraction sa Athens is yung, yung Parthenon. Di ba? Alam natin yung pinaka main uh, attraction um, sa Athens. And that is, uh, yun nga, sabi natin uh, Parthenon na napaka, ano, napaka matagal na, napakatagal na itinuyo. Uh, according to uh, historical account, mga 400 BC, na maitay yung Parthenon na yan. And that Parthenon na makikita mo, ito yung uh, kinawang temple for Athens. No? Nasa gitna na yun yung pinaka-main temple devoted to the god of Athena. I mean, to the god of Athens, which is Athena. No? Uh, Athena yung sinasabi nilang anak of Zeus. Athena yung kanilang dios na sinasabi that led them to victory. So masyad nilang wino-worship yung mga dios-diosan. So they've... Uh, they have a lot of idols doon sa Athens. So imagine, uh, tinayo yung Parthenon na yan, 400 BC, and doon dumating si Paul sa Athens, very, ano pa rin, very uh, common pa rin yung practice ng pag-worship ng mga idols. They have, Z they have Zeus, they have, yung nasabi ko nga, Poseidon, they have Apollo, they have Hermes, marami, daming gods no, sa, sa Athens that they worship. Kaya mapapansin mo, ang daming mga idols, no? ang daming mga ribulto, na rebulto that uh, were recovered na um, even before Christ were there no and uh, archaeologists have uh, discovered some of them still standing at ito yung mga ilan sa mga rebultong nakatayo doon sa Parthenon sa Temple of uh, Athena no dami nilang mga ano mga rebulto talaga very ano sila very very uh, ano sila sa paggawa ng idols no wonder si Paul nagulat si Pablo no nung pagdating niya ng Athens ang dami na nakita mga mga idols no and doon iba't ibang mga dios-dios nila so kung pupunta ka sa museum doon sa sa Athens naka-display pa rin doon yung mga idols that have been uh, created um during the first century and even before Christ no kaya nung uh, dumating si Pablo uh, gulat na gulat siya no so yung magiging text natin tonight dito sa Acts chapter 17 Verses 16 to 34. No? So if you have your uh, Bibles again, uh, join me, uh, me na basahin ang Acts 17 uh, verses 16 to 34. Uh, Naka-reflect din siya sa, sa screen. Naka-share din siya sa screen. So ito yung nangyari. No? Uh, sabi dito, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, ang, ang tinutukoy dito ng them, sina Timothy and uh, Silas or Silvanus. Kung mabasahin ni previous verses, uh, nag-preach si na Pablo sa Berea, no? another town in Greece. Nag-preach sila sa Berea and uh, lahat ng kanilang preaching sa Berea, the Bereans were faithful enough to search it and uh, of course, marami mga uh, naniwala no? sa preaching ni na Paul. And then yung mga Jews, yung mga Hudyo from Thessalonica, narinig nila na Paul was preaching the gospel sa Berea. So they went to, uh, to Berea para uh, uh, usigin si Pablo no? and then ang ginawa ng mga believers sa Berea, pinadala si Pablo doon sa Athens uh, para sumusunod si Silas and Timothy so nung nasa Athens na si Pablo ito ang sabi ng verse 16 while Paul was waiting for them referring to Timothy and Silas or Silvanus Paul was greatly distressed to see that the city the city of Athens was full of idols no? dami dami mga idols, yung mga nakita natin no? so he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, 
as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happen to be there. A group of uh, Epicurean and Stoic philosophers, no? Yung Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said, they said this because Paul was preaching the goodness about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus, where they said to him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we would like to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who live there spend their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. No? Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully to your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to one unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. He is not <coughs> human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. <coughs> One man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of the lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysius, a member of the Areopagus, also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others, no? <clears throat> so yun yung, ano, yun yung uh, uh, nangyari base sa pagkakasulat ni Lucas, no? Nangyari doon kina Pablo uh, sa, sa Athens. So, uh, of course, uh, katulad ng panalangin ni Brother Well kanina, we, we rely, no? We rely on, 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 on scripture and on God's spirit as we learn to study kung ano yung pinaproklaman ni Pablo dito, no? And uh, we can only do that by searching scripture and by relying on God's strength and understanding. Okay, so, makikita natin dito na si Pablo nagulat siya. As we can see sa verse 16, he was distressed, na, na, nagulat siya, dahil ang dami niya nakita mga idolo sa atin. Sabi ko nga, as kung pupunta ka doon, makikita mo, hanggang ngayon, ang dami pa rin mga, mga idols doon of the gods, na sila Zeus and all that. No? So, he reasoned, na, na, nangatwiran siya, kumbaga, nakapag-diskusyon sa sa mga Hudyo, at sa ibang mga uh, uh, Greeks, no? mga non-Jews, sa marketplace para ipahayag ang Ibanghelyo. Na gusto ko muna pagtuunan ng pansin itong verse 18. Sabi doon, a group of uh, Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. Na ano yung Epicurean and Stoic philosophers na yan? Uh, sa ngayon, maaari na some of you may have encountered them already. Dahil bagamat... Uh, matagal na ito, uh, ancient Greek philosophy ito, yung Epicureans and the Stoics, eh, laganap siya ngayon. Other, other unbelievers may not be aware na sila eh, Epicurean philosophy sila o baka iba, they're not aware that they have embraced Stoic philosophy. Pero nung panahon ni Pablo, uh, laganap yung Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. Ano yan? Ito isang uri ng pangaral. No? Philosophy yan mula sa, of course, sa Griego, patungkol sa kung paano mamuhay ng tama. Yung Epicurean, ito yung mga nagtuturo na para magkaroon ng magandang buhay, iwasan ang uh, mga bagay na nakakasakit. Yan, sa kanila, no? And uh, live a life of pleasure, no? Uh, ang kanilang uh, sense ng pamumuhay is huwag matakot dahil walang ibubunga ang pagkatakot. Sa halip, iwasan ang mga bagay na kinatatakutan mo at kung ano yung nagbibigay ng kaligayahan 
yun ang i-embrace mo no that is how you live a good life according to to this philosophy no yung mga epicureans uh, they do not believe of course in in the mythical gods neither do they believe in the resurrection sa kanila is uh, it's a laughable matter isang nakakatawang bagay ang resurrection according to the epicureans dahil sa kanila para mabuhay ka ng tama importante is you are enjoying your life all Although dapat eh, wag naman maging masyado ang kaligayahan mo. That is their philosophy. Yung Stoics naman on the other hand, ang Stoics naman sa kanila, life, to live a good life, dapat eh, uh, embrace mo ang mga virtues ng honesty, justice, courage, uh, bravery, uh, truthfulness. Yan ang kanilang philosophy. No? Uh, hindi ka na kailangan uh, maging mayaman ka, hindi mo rin kinakailangan maging mahirap para maranasan ang magandang pamumuhay for as long as you embrace virtues of you know, justice, honesty, goodness, integrity, and all that. No? Sa kanila, virtues ang mahalaga. Uh, they believe in God, but they believe na the gods have nothing to do with your life here on earth. They believe na uh, you should embrace things as they happen. Yun ang philosophy ng Stoics. Embrace things as they happen because that is the universe. That is nature working. No? Uh, they don't think that it is God at work uh, in all ways, but they believe that that is nature, yun ang kapalaran, e eh dapat harapin. That is the philosophy of the Stoics. So ito yung sinasabi ni Pablo, na, uh, sinasabi ni Lucas, na uh, a group of uh, Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with Paul. And some of them asked, what is this uh, bubbler uh, trying to say? No? So titignan mo, Um, I'm just showing you some slides ng uh, founder ng uh, ganyang philosophy, no? si Epicurus. And uh, sa kanila ang sinasabi ni, ng Epicurean is that para hindi ka um, matakot sa kamatayan, isipin mo na ang buhay dito sa mundo, ito na yung buhay. Na walang buhay after death para hindi ka matakot sa kamatayan. That is their philosophy. Kaya nga, Nowadays, very active yung ganitong class in philosophy. No? May mga kasama ko sa trabaho, that is their own belief. Now, this is the life, the only life that you have. And after this, that's it. You sleep forever, eternally, and no more after this. This is the life. Yan ang philosophy ng Epicurean. Para na sa gayon, hindi sila natatakot about death. No? Ang Stoic, sabi nga natin, is uh, virtues ang mahalaga. Ang founder niyan, of course, is Zeno. And ang uh, philosophy ng uh, Stoic is that yun, dapat e... Eh, mas mahalaga meron kang virtues no and uh, marami ang nag embrace niyan kung tutuusin even today marami sa ka, uh, kasalukuyan ang naniniwala na mabuhay ka lang ng tama no just uh, embrace uh, the virtues and you will be fine no uh, kung titingnan natin that is contrary to scripture no dahil makikita natin na no one is righteous we cannot attain righteousness no so ito si Pablo presenta niya yung gospel so how did Paul Uh, present the gospel sa mga Athenians, mga nan naninirahan sa Athens, who worship the idols and who worship their gods. Remember na panahon na yun, uh, Zeus, Poseidon were not uh, mythical gods. For them, those were real gods. No? Para sa mga tao ng panahon na yun, naniniwala sila tunay na Diyos sa mga yun. But here is Paul, dumating si Pablo, piniliwanag niya ang tunay na Diyos, kung sino yung tunay na Diyos. May kita mo yan sa verse 23. No? Nung sinabi ni Pablo na uh, ang, ang Diyos, ang tunay na Diyos, e siyang lumikha ng sanlibutan. No? Lahat ng nasa sanlibutan at lahat ng bagay sa, mundo, sa daigdig, no? sa universe, sa, kala, sa kalawakan. No? Uh, kasama dyan siyempre ang tao. No? Kaya ang binanggit ni Pablo, He's the Lord of the heaven and the earth. Piniliwanag niyo na the God, the true God, who created everything, He does not live in temples built by man. Yung una niyang birada sa verse 23. No? Na hindi sila naninirahan sa templong gawa ng tao. No? Pinoint out niya doon na <clears throat> yung Diyos niyan sa verse 24, that should be verse 24, no? The verse 24 doon is the God who made the world and everything is the one that is true God, does not live in temples built by man. No? And then sa verse 25, sinabi niya rin doon na he is not He does not need yung service ng tao because human hands cannot serve his needs, God's needs, because God is sufficient by himself. No, He does not need our service dahil kung tutuusin, he can exist without us. No? 
kaya sabi ni Pablo sa verse 25, yung sa notes niya that, that should be verse 25, human hands cannot serve his needs because he has no needs. Bakit? Kasi sa halip na tayong naglilingkod sa Diyos, it is God, it is from God where we live. We have our being. Kaya ang sabi niya doon sa verse 25, it is from Him uh, we have uh, our being. We live and we move. No? Sa verse 25. So notice yung kanyang pinapoint out dito sa mga taga uh, Athens na naniniwala sa mga Diyos-Diyosan, sa mga idols. Ang sabi niya, this true God created the heavens and the earth. He does not live in temples in, in, made by man and neither Uh, is he being served by man? Bakit? Because it is from God, this true God, from whom we live, we survive, because it is this life comes from him. We move and we have our being uh, from the one true God. Yun ang kanyang presenta sa verse 26. And then sabi niya doon na uh, ang, ang, ang design ng Panginoon, design ng Diyos is that every culture, no? every Man from every nation, make it in verse 26. From one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. Bakit? Para na sa gayon is that the nation would seek him. No? That the people, all peoples of the earth will seek him. Pero kung matatanda mo sa Romans chapter 3, binanggit ni Pablo, because of man's sinfulness, no one is seeking God. No? Uh, the design of God is that, that every nation, every man from every nation will cover the face of the earth para magkaroon ng uh, uh, harmonious relationship where men will seek God and be thankful for the goodness that men experience from God. Pero sabi ni pa, ang sabi ni Pablo sa Romans, na nakita natin last time, sa Romans is that no one seeks God. No one is righteous because no one seeks God. Why? Because of man's sin sinfulness. Dahil sa kasalanan ng tao. No. And then sabi pa ni, ni Pablo dito sa verses 29 and 30, no? Uh, yung yung mga nasa Athens, pinoint out niya na itong tunay na Diyos, sabi niya, eh, eh di pwedeng hindi hindi likha ng tao, no? Let me just read to you sa isang version. Sabi nito, verse 29, and since this is true meaning that we are God's offspring, We should not think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. So here is Paul, directly, direct ang sinasab sinasabi niya sa mga taga Athens na itong tunay na Diyos, sabi niya ganoon, itong tunay na Diyos ay hindi isang idolong gawa ng sino mang tao na maaaring gawa, kahit gawa pa siya sa mahalagang bagay na ginto o bronze o kung ano man. Yung sabi ni Pablo na hindi uh, because uh, the true God is not made of uh, an object created by man. Sa halip, sa halip, it is God who created everything. No? It is God who created everything and not men creating God. Katulad na nakita niya sa Athens. Dahil nakita niya, dami mga ribulto. No? Nakita, nakita, makikita mo doon yung malaking ribulto ni Zeus. Yung malaking ribulto ni, ni Poseidon made of bronze. Hanggang ngayon, nandudun pa rin. No? Uh, that is how people were so religious at that time, worshiping these uh, graven images. And Paul is saying, hindi. Sabi niya, sabi niya na, na the, the, the true God, we should not think of God as an idol. Sabi niya sa verse 29, designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. And then sinabi niya, nung panahon na yun, God, during the times of ignorance, sabi ni Pablo, ito ay uh, halos in an overlook, no? in overlook ng Panginoon. Sabi niya sa verse 30, God overlooked people's former ignorance about these things. Dati, no? Dati parang in overlook lang ng Diyos yan, sabi ni Pablo. Pero ngayon, sabi niya, but now, verse 30, He commands. Notice what Paul is saying here. He commands everyone everywhere. To what? To turn away from idols and to turn to Him. Sa ibang version, He commands people everywhere to what? To repent. Repent from what? Repent from worshiping the false idols because they have created uh, gods uh, according to their own perception. You know? They created false gods thinking na ilang tunay na Dios. But Paul is saying here, kinakailangan na mag-repent na ngayon 
Why? Kin bakit kinakailangan mag-repent? So verse 31 because what? Judgment is coming. So take the I want us to focus on, on verse 30 and 31. Sinabi ni Pablo dito na dati God overlooked these uh, times of ignorance. Um bagamat it deserves punishment, God Overlook this uh, times of ignorance, but now, sabi ni Pablo, God is commanding all people to repent from that false uh, worship of false God, no? from worshiping false gods and idols. Why? Verse 31, because a day of judgment has been set. Clearly, sinabi niya, for he has set a day for judging the world by, with justice by the man he has appointed. No? So clearly, Kinakailangan magkaroon ng pagsisisi sa pagsamba sa mga uh, peking Diyos, ng no? mga Diyos-Diyosan na ginawa dahil may nakatakdang araw ng pagpupukom. No? A day of, of judgment has been set. Clearly, maliwanag yan sa verse 31 ng, ng Acts chapter 17. Siyempre, pero ito si Pablo. Kaya ang binanggit ni Pablo yung good news. Eh. Ano yung magandang balita? Bago dumating yung araw ng pagpupukom, before that day of judgment comes, ito si Pablo ngayon, sinasabi niya na merong day of salvation. Kaya nga kinakailangan magkaroon ng pagsisisi. Why? Because when we repent, when we believe the true God as revealed by Jesus Christ, then there is forgiveness of sins. And there is eternal life as, as uh, promised by but the Lord. So here is Paul saying na, uh, Talikuran itong mga peking Diyos dahil hindi yan ang tunay na Diyos. There is a day na tayo mahuhusgahan ng ating mga ginagawa. Pero ngayon, sabi niya, God is calling for everyone to repent. Kinakailangan ma-realize natin ang day of judgment is tiyak na. No? Sigurado na. No? Yung call to repentance si talagang mahalaga sapagkat uh, habang hindi pa dumarte yung araw ng paghukom, habang buhay pa tayo, kumbaga, Ang repentance is kinakailangan because there is only salvation when we repent and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because judgment day is coming, judgment is definite. Maliwanag against the scripture. Luke chapter 17 verse 24, uh, verse 30, sinabi doon ng Panginoon Jesus na talagang yes, tiyak, definite ang, uh, ang araw ng uh, paghukom. No? That is certain to happen. Makikita mo yan sa passages of uh, scripture. So Luke 17, 24, sabi na doon, For when the Son of Man returns, you will know it beyond all doubt. No, It will be as evident as the lightning and flashes across the sky. So verse 13 ng uh, Luke 17, sinabi niya din, Yes, it will be business as usual when the Son of Man returns. There is a definite day. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, sabi ni Pablo Don, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Lahat tayo, we will all stand. We will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Why? Each one will receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. This does not refer to salvation by works, but rather whether you trusted Christ or not, because salvation is in Christ alone. No? So judgment is certain to happen. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, I solemnly charge you before God, sabi ni Pablo kay Timothy. I charge you, inudyo kita before God and before Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead and by his manifestation in his kingdom. Judgment is definite. No? It is definite. Tiyak na darating yan. No less than the Lord Jesus Christ himself said in John chapter 5, verses 27-29. Sabi niya, and he, and, and he has given him authority to execute judgment. Sino yung he na yon? Jesus Christ, because he is the son of man. Sabi pa ni Christ sa verse 28, Do not marvel at this, sabi niya. For an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out. And those who have done good to the resurrection of life, good means those who are in Christ, and to those who have done evil, those who have rejected Christ, to the resurrection of judgment. Salvation is not by work. Salvation has been attained in Christ Jesus. No? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse, uh, verses 5 to 8. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God. Ano yung, ano yung ebidensya ng righteous judgment of God? That you, kayo yung mga mananampalataya kay Cristo Jesus, may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. Since indeed, God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you. No? Talagang, uh, talagang gagantihan, babuyan, kumbaga, 
ng Diyos yung mga nagpapahirap sa kanyang mga anak. No? And to grant relief to you. Kayong mga anak ng Diyos na nagdurusa, sabi niya sa verse 7, uh, God will grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us. Pero kailan, kailan darating yung relief na yun? That is when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with His mighty angels. So yung relief ng suffering Christian will not will it will never take place in this world. Maliwanag sa scripture ng relief natin from the afflictions we suffer as Christians. It will be revealed, no? When Christ, it will, it will it will take place when Christ is revealed from heaven with His mighty angels. And then yung mga those afflicting. Uh, of afflicting the followers of Christ, sabi sa, sa scripture, they will receive the affliction no? well, when Christ is revealed from heaven. Verse 8, in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is Paul saying that talagang judgment day is definite. Kaya nga sabi niya sa Acts 17, he, God is calling everyone from everywhere to repent turn away from worship of false idols no to repent why because a day of judgment is coming that day of judgment he has set and that day of judgment will be made uh, the, the judgment itself judgment will be made by the lord jesus christ no and judgment is pangkalahatan no? sa lahat, both living and the dead and judgment will be made by the man he has appointed simeon no other than Jesus Christ himself. Nabasa natin yan sa John 5.27. Christ himself will be the judge. He will judge both the living and the dead. Mahikita mo rin sa Acts chapter 10 verses 42 to 43. No? Ang sabi ni Pablo doon, and he commanded, uh, ni Pedro, no? si Pedro ito, sorry, and he commanded us to preach to the people no? and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. Bakit? Sabi ni Pedro, to him, Meaning to Jesus, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in Jesus receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Because Christ is the judge. He will be the judge of both the living and the dead. No wonder, nung sinabi niya sa Matthew chapter 28, diba? sinabi niya when he was uh, about to ascend to heaven, sinabi niya na uh, all authority has been given unto me before he has, bago niya inatasan yung kanyang mga disipulo, binanggit niya doon nag, Everything, every authority has been given to him. Why? Because he is the Son of God. No, uh, he sits at the right hand of the Father. He will be the judge when the day of judgment comes. Day of judgment is certain. Tiyak na darating yan. Tiyak na tiyak na darating ang araw ng judgment. Let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter one again. Ito si Pablo, no? Uh, reiterating na talagang this day of judgment will come. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, no? <clears throat> verses 5 to 10. Nakita na rin natin ito in, in, in many of our studies. Sabi ni Pablo dito, 2 Thessalonians 1, But God will use this persecution to show His justice, for He will make you worthy of His kingdom for which you are suffering. And in His justice, He will punish those who persecute you. And God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted and also for us when the Lord Jesus appears from heaven. So when will this justice take place? When will this relief take place? It will take place when Jesus appears from heaven. He will come with his mighty angels in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who do not know God and on those who refuse to obey the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will be punished with everlasting destruction forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. When he comes to receive glory and praise from his holy people, and you will be among those praising him on that day for you believed what we testified about him. The day of judgment is when God's people will experience you know, relief and joy, you know? And uh, absolute relief from the suffering that Christians suffer because of their faith, because of their trust in the Lord. And for those who ridicule, for those who afflict, for those who persecute the followers of Christ, vindication, I mean the suffering, affliction will fall upon them when Christ uh, is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. That is certain. No? It is certain to happen. Now, balikan natin yung Acts. The maganda yung point ni Pablo dito, ni, ano, ni, ni Pablo dito eh, no? sa, sa Acts 17. Lalo nung binanggit niya na kinakailangan mag-repent. Bakit? Dahil nga sa may araw na paghukom na darating. No? <clears throat> uh, judgment 
is certain to happen. <clears throat> and then sabi yan dito, verse 31, for he has set a day for judging the world with what? With justice by the man he has appointed. Sino yan? No other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. So ang ginamit dito ni, ginamit dito ni Pablo na katibayan na talagang darating yung araw ng paghuhukong is yung resurrection ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. It is the resurrection that Paul used. Why? Because Paul is a witness. No? Paul is a witness. Hindi lang si Pablo, pati si na Pedro eh. Kung titignan natin yung Bible natin sa Acts chapter 1, no? let's go back to Acts chapter 1. Ito si Luke, no? giving an account of uh, the final days uh, before Christ uh, ascended. And uh, remember Luke also being an eyewitness and that uh, other disciples were with, with the Lord. No? So Acts chapter 1, sinabi dito ni, uh, ni Lucas, no? sabi niya, uh, dear Theophilus, sabi niya, in my first book, I told you about everything Jesus began to do and teach. No? Verse 2, until the day he ascended to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions from the Holy Spirit. Ito sabi ni, ni Luke, no? during the 40 days after his crucifixion, he appeared, what is Luke? Uh, very clear, no? sabi niya, he appeared to the apostles from time to time and proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. On these occasions, he talked to them about the kingdom of God. So the resurrection of Christ is the one that Paul is using to proclaim the gospel. No? Kasi remember, hindi, yung, yung, hindi lang yung birth ni Christ ang siyang, ano eh? hindi lang yung birth ng Panginoon Jesus ang, ang end of the story eh. The birth of Christ was just the beginning. No? Yung kanyang sinless life, na walang kasalanan na nabuhay in the flesh, despite being tempted for 40 days uh, by the devil himself, hindi siya nagkasala. And more importantly, his death. Bakit? Because his death, by his death, pinatunayan niya, na kaya niya na, na, natalo niya na yung death by his resurrection. That's why when we present the gospel, it's not about, you know, it's not about, you know what? Uh, Jesus loves you and he wants to, to prosper you. That is not the gospel. When we say the when, when we preach the gospel, you know what? Yeah. Jesus wants to feel the emptiness in your heart. That is not the gospel. The gospel is this. God is calling for everyone else to repent and to turn to God as revealed by Jesus Christ for whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ receives eternal life. That is the gospel. Repentance. Repentance from the worship of false gods. Uh, sa ating panahon ngayon, marami tayong mga false, false God. Even ourselves, we consider ourselves as, as, as even God. No? Yung uh, wealth natin, sometimes we, we idolize the wealth more than we worship the Lord. Sometimes we idolize a person more than we worship the Lord. No? Marami tayong mga, mga false, kanya-kanyang Diyos-Diyosan. Not necessarily graven image, pero so, even uh, our phone can even be considered um, a... Uh, an idol. No? Mas mahal pa natin ang telepono natin kumpara sa Diyos. No? And so therefore, the gospel is about you know, repenting from our ways because the good news is, kaya natin the good news eh. Bakit good news? Man is doomed to die. Man is condemned to death. That's, that's the bad news. Now, why? Because man is sinful. Man needs a savior. The good news is this, is when you repent and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, then there is eternal life. There is eternal life. There is uh, salvation from the day of judgment. That is the good news. Kaya na pinawag ng magandang balita. Eh. No? Kasi merong uh, kaligtasan mula sa uh, araw ng paghukum. And that is by repenting and trusting in the one true God. And remember sa study natin sa Colossians, that one true God has been revealed to us by Jesus Christ because Jesus is the very image of the invisible God. So that's the gospel as presented. Hindi yung 19th century and 21st century uh, evangelization, uh, guilty ako nito eh, when I was doing evangelization way back in the early 90s, no? Nang um, present ko ng gospel is, in, if you feel like uh, there is emptiness in your heart, if you feel like you don't have uh, the happiness in your heart, turn to Jesus. This is, will give you the happiness that you're looking for. Mali, maling mali. That, Paul never preached that way. 
Peter did not preach that way. All they, the, what they proclaimed was repent, repent, for now is the day of salvation. And how do you repent? By trusting and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we supposed to believe about the Lord Jesus Christ? That he is the Christ, the son of God, who uh, came to fulfill scriptures, who lived a sinless life, died on the cross, but he defeated death when he rose again on the third day and showed himself to his disciples and proclaimed many wonders. No. That is the gospel. It's not the gospel that the 21st century now teaches. No, no. Kung meron kang kalungkutan, yun ni dahil kulang si Jesus sa buhay mo. No? Parang addition lang si Jesus. No? The gospel is the need for repentance. Why? Because remember study natin sa Romans? Romans chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ano yun? Nang tao is makasalanan. 1, 2, 3. Lahat makasalanan. Walang sino man ang matuwid. No? Uh, lahat tayo nagkasala. We have fallen short of God's glory. Kaya kinakailangan na magkaroon ng what? Ng identification. Being one with the Lord. Uh, kita natin sa chapter 6 of Romans. No? That is the good news. That is how Paul presented the gospel. And hindi nagbago. If you remember yung study natin sa Romans, ganun din eh. Pinupoint out niya, nagkasala, nagkasala. Kay Grego ka o Hudyo, nagkasala lahat ng tao. Walang sino man ang tama. And here is Paul again sa mga uh, taga Athens. Bagamat hindi niya, hindi siya kasing harsh katulad ng sa Rome, dito sa Athens, sinabi niya, I know that you are religious in every way. No? In-acknowledge niya yung pagiging pag pag religious ng mga taga Athens. Pero sabi niya, pero let me, uh, let me show you yung kakulangan ninyo, yung ignorance ninyo, let me show you how ignorant you are because the true God is not the one that is created by human hands because the true God is the one who created the heavens and the earth. No, that's not living temples. It's not served by man, but rather it is from him. We have our, our, our being, our, we live, we move, and we have our being. And then don't get pinoint out yung day of salvation, a day of uh, judgment, where judgment will be made by him, referring to Christ and Christ Jesus alone. Hence, he was calling for the repentance and uh, trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. Huh? That is the gospel. So, sa atin ngayon, kung ang pagkakaintindi natin sa gospel is that oh, God feel, uh, Jesus is the one who feels emptiness in my heart. Medyo, it's more than that. It's, just, it's more than just feeling the emptiness in your heart. Jesus is the one who is able to give you the life that you need, anong life yun? not just emptiness, feel the emptiness, but try to give you eternal life, the newness of life that can be found in Christ Jesus alone. Sadly, sabi natin, nakorap yung gospel. Nakorap yung gospel in the sense na parang uh, tinatanggal yung need for repentance at ang kailangan na lang is just believe in Jesus. Wala na yung repentance. When in fact, kung babasahin mo yung Luke, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and even yung uh, first century church so Acts, ang kanilang call is what? The preaching is for repentance. Jesus himself uh, commanded for repentance. Mga basa mo yun sa synoptic gospels. Uh, it was for repentance. It's not about you know uh, the need to be to be blessed, the need to be prosperous. Gusto mo bang magprosper? Gusto mo bang uh, mapromote sa trabaho? Gusto mo bang uh, pagpalain? Notice? Kung gusto mo nang ganyan, magtiwala kay Kristo Jesus. I mean, wala siyang pinagkaiba sa turo ng Buddhism. Eh. Because that is the teaching of Buddhism itself. You want to experience peace and goodness? Trust in Buddha. Believe in um, whatever it is. No? Ayun ang, yun ang teaching nila. It's not about you know, repenting, repenting from our sins, um, repenting from worshiping the false gods because there is only one true God. And that is the, Lord, that is the God that is revealed by the Lord Jesus Christ that is his father who created everything from whom we have our being, we live and we move. No? That is how the gospel is presented. Kaya sa atin ngayon, ano yung relevance niya sa atin? Yung mga kaibigan tayo na they still worship uh, images and all that. Um, you know, um, depending on, uh, siyempre, hindi, wala namang dikahon yun eh. Ang dikahon lang dyan is the need to worship the true God. No? You know that the true God does not, live in temples no you know the true god is not one created by by man no uh, it's very important to to to, to show them that again, the true god is the one who is not you know created by man because uh, he created instead the whole universe uh, it's very important to point that out dahil 
lalo sa atin, sa mga kababayan natin, uh, talaga nadudoon yung strong attachment sa mga ribulto, no? sa mga Santo Nino and uh, iba't ibang mga santo pa na gawa ng mga uh, taga Southern Tagalog or even ng mga taga nasa Central Philippines. No? Uh, it's very important na ma-point out ng tunay na Diyos ay buhay at hindi yung gawa-gawa lamang ng tao. So that's how Paul presented the the gospel to the Athenian believers, no? And uh, hopefully, you know, we will uh, continue to be reminded of the fact na ang false gods ay hindi lang limited sa graven images. Our false gods panahon natin ngayon eh, kumalat na, no? Andiyan na yas sa uh, virtual world, um, mga gadgets, material things. Uh, madalas yun ang ginodos ng mga tao. Um, talagang there is a need for repentance para people will start worshiping the one true God again in Christ Jesus. No. So that is, no, that is, uh, it should be more of a, uh, a, a an Easter a study dahil pinoint out ni Pablo dito yung kahalagahan ng resurrection. No. He proved the one true God revealed by Christ by Christ's resurrection na talaga ang tunay na Diyos eh yun Diyos na ipinahayag ng Panginoon Heso Kristo. Kaya nga, you know, kung ang tanong natin is how do we know na talagang uh, the God that we worship is the one true God? Well, because the one true God has been revealed to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. No? Scripture and Scripture alone. Eh, ang Mormons naman eh, nagtuturo din ng Mormons ng Scripture. Oo, mm -hmm. pero mali ang turo nila. Pati malalamang mali. Kasi nagsimula lang ang Mormons noong 1800 lang. 1800s lang nagsimula ang Mormon, Joseph Smith. No? Sila yung lumihis ng landas. Eh, ang Jehovah's Witnesses, nagturo din sila ng scripture pa natin malamang mali sila. Eh, kasi ang Jehovah's Witnesses, nagsimula lang sila magturo noong 1800s din, mga Russellites, di ba? Noong 1870s, 1850s, 1840s, Russellites. Lahat nangyari during the 19th century. Di ba? Uh, mga... Ano pa iba mga kulto? <laughs> mga ibang kulto naglalabasan. Uh, why do we say na mali tinuturo nilang Jesus? Because these are cults or religions that have been uh, established in the 1800s and deviated from the teaching of the first century Christians. Ano yung teaching of first century Christians? Ito, scripture mismo. Uh, if you read from, from the book of Acts, may kita mo doon talagang preaching nila. Wala sila ibang preach kundi about the deity of Christ Christ being, uh, Jesus being uh, divine, Jesus being the Son of God, Jesus being the Christ. And Jehovah's Witnesses, they teach that Jesus is just man. No? Islam teaches Jesus as only a prophet, a man. No? And the uh, Mormons believe that Jesus is the brother of Satan. I mean, totally foreign, totally unscriptural and unbiblical. No? So yun, yun ang uh, <clears throat> reminder sa atin na uh, We have to uh, present the gospel as it is, present the one true God as revealed by Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus Christ.